Databases with a large enough dataset or read-write throughput can challenge the capacity of a single server. Sharding is a method for distributing your dataset across multiple servers, and in this tutorial we're going to look at how Spring Data MongoDB can bring sharding to your Spring application. So before we get started, there's a few things we'll need. First is Java installed in your machine, version 17 or higher. We'll also need Maven, version 3.9.6 or higher. You'll also need a Spring Boot project with Spring Data MongoDB and Spring Web installed as dependencies. You can set this up yourself using Spring Initializer, or you can clone the project that we have linked to this video in the description. You'll also need the MongoDB shell for interacting with your MongoDB database, and you'll need a MongoDB account. Once you have all this, what we're going to do is we're going to get started with setting up our cluster. When creating our new cluster, there's a few things we need to configure so we can shard our application. First thing we'll need to do is make sure we have an M30 cluster. So to do this, we're on our dedicated cluster. We're going to scroll down, and you'll see for our tier, our cluster tier, we have M30. You can do it with a higher cluster, but it needs to be a minimum M30 to enable sharding. Next thing we need to do is we need to go to the additional settings. So keep scrolling down further, and you'll see here we have shared your cluster. So if we toggle this, we can decide how many shards we want. So for your production applications, you need a minimum of two shards to actually reap the benefits of sharding, but you can choose anywhere between one and 100 shards. For this, we'll just go with three. So if we create our cluster now, we should be set to go. Perfect. Now while this is provisioning, this will take some time, so you can step away and come back when all this is ready. So now that our cluster is set up, next we're going to load in some sample data. So I'm just going to click this prompt here on screen and it's going to load in the MongoDB sample set. We're just going to use this to test out sharding our cluster later, saves us creating our own data. While this is loading, we're also going to connect to our database. So Spring Data MongoDB does not automatically set up sharding for collections. We need to do this manually and we're going to use Mongosh for this. So I have a terminal open over here and in my terminal, I'm going to connect to my database. So a quick way of doing this is to just go connect. You go to shell and you get your connection string. Now, if you don't have Mongosh installed, there are instructions here on how to install, depending on your operating system. I already have it set up here. I'm just going to hit copy. And then in my terminal, I can paste this. Perfect. And next, I just need to enter my password. If everything's okay there, what it should do is it should just log in and perfect, we're logged into our cluster here. So we'll wait a moment and we'll wait for our sample data to load in and then we'll share that collection. Okay, so now that our data is loaded into our database, we're going to use the sample inflex database and our users collection. So in this, we're going to choose our shared key as the email. Now there's a couple of best practices to keep in mind when you're choosing your shared key to help maintain an even distribution of data. And this is critical for maintaining a high performance and the scalability of your sharded cluster. So ideally, your shared key should have a high cardinality. This means that the key should have many unique values to ensure the data is evenly distributed across the shards. So it's not necessary that the shared key be entirely unique, but it is important that it does have this high cardinality. Next, we're going to think about providing an even distribution of our data. So to evenly distribute our documents, Across all of our shards, we want to avoid having hotspots where one shard handles more data than the other requests. So if you think if you have particularly common keys that are going to be picked up a lot, you want to avoid using these. The reason is if you have one cluster that's handling 90% of your requests and the other two are only getting 10% of the requests, then you're really not getting the most out of your shards as you could be if your application or if your database is dealing with a lot of throughput. Next, you also want to support common queries. So you want to choose a key that aligns with your common query patterns to minimize the query scatter and to optimize the performance of your application. So for the user's collection in our sample Netflix database, using the email field as the sharding key is a good choice if emails are unique or relatively unique and are well distributed. And as well as that, if we're using queries that frequently filter or sort by email. So if we're using the email to sort our users, so let's say, the name doesn't have to be unique in ours. And of course, we're not going to be searching by password. It makes sense for the email. If we're frequently searching users, we will be using that email field to search our users. Now, there's a lot to consider when you're choosing your shared keys. You're not limited to having just one field for a shared key. You're able to have it compounded. So I will link some documentation down below to help you better decide what your shared key should be for your application. Now that we have that out of the way, what we're going to do is we're going to actually set up our collection for this and we're going to shard it using Mongosh. So if we go back to our terminal, I have a command here that I'm going to put in and it's just 
sh.shard collection, and then we're going to go sample inflicts.users, and we're going to pass in that second parameter, which is just the email. So this will shard our collection by the email. So if we run this, this will take a little bit of time, not too long at all. And now our collection will be set up to be sharded by that email field. Now, if we do want to verify that it's been sharded, we can just type in sh.status and in our output here, we'll be able to look through and we'll be able to check manually if our database has been sharded. So we can scroll up here and you can see in the configuration for ours that we are in fact sharded. Perfect. So now that we have our MongoDB database set up and our collection set up to be sharded, what we're going to do is we're going to go through our Spring Data application and look at what we need in Spring Data to shard our application. Now, I won't be taking you through how to set up the entire application. We will have a GitHub repo that you can clone yourself, and we'll just focus on the points needed for actually enabling sharding in the application. It's really easy to get set up with Spring Data, so this part shouldn't take too long at all. So what I have here is just a very simple user API. You'll see I just have a couple of endpoints, a get all users and create user. A lot of this will look very familiar to you if you're used to using Mongo repository. You see here, this means we get access to all of our CRUD operations that are MongoDB database, and we're using our service art to implement that. But the only difference we need to focus on for having a sharded database is here in our model, we have our shard key. So you'll see our shard key is email. And this is just to indicate to our application that we are in fact working on a sharded collection. Now, for using this, all the implementation is done on the MongoDB database side, but what this will do is it just helps with code clarity. As well as that, it will help with the integration of other Spring Data features, as well as aiding the scheme evolution. So if you're working with stuff like schema validation to ensure that any changes to the shared key fields are deliberate and reviewed, as well as that, it will help with query optimization. So when writing your custom queries for repository methods, developers can easily identify which fields are these shared keys and they can optimize accordingly, as well as that with your automated testing, and it will add metadata to the fields that are sharded. Now here we only have the shared key for the email, but let's say it was a compound shared key. We would have something like email and password. And it's just as simple as that for annotating which fields are shared keys. So there you have it. Again, everything is really done on the MongoDB database side. All the configuration is done there, and this is just for interacting with it with our Spring Data application. Once you have all that set up, you're ready to get going with querying your sharded database. So there you have it. You now know how to get started with sharding in your application to implement that feature for your horizontal scaling. If you found this tutorial useful, what you can do is you can like and subscribe. You can head over to the channel to find more tutorials. As well as that, head over to our developer center where we have the written version of this tutorial as well as many more. And if you're working with MongoDB, check out our MongoDB community forums where you can ask questions, you can see what other people are working on. Thank you and bye.